Differential diffusion is in painting on steroids. It's time to rock. This method has two huge benefits. The first is that it understands better what is going on in the image. So it replaces what you want to in paint in a more natural way. And the other one you can see here is that you can use different gray values to define where in the image you want to replace how much. So you can do in painting basically on a pixel by pixel level. So the darker the value goes in your mask, the more the image is going to be replaced. And you can see here some beautiful examples of that. Now, this is not yet working inside of Automatic 1111. However, you can use it inside of Vlad Diffusion. I couldn't get it to run myself, but you can try to make it happen. Now, I have a reinstall of Vlad Diffusion. So this is completely fresh install. And when you go down here where you find your scripts, you can see here Differential Diffusion is one of the choices with their new update. Now down here, you can enable it, you can mask invert, you can set the mask strength, and you can also set a model here. When you select these models, these are going to download on the first rendering process. So this is going to be slower. And then also down here, you can load a mask. Now, apparently, if you don't select a mask image down here, this is auto generating one for you, but I got a null error. So instead, I'm going to show you this inside of ComfyUI, where again, I think this is a lot more powerful. And also, as always, my Patreon supporters get this workflow so you can try that for yourself. I built here at the beginning a very simple classic process where you load the model, you have your positive and negative prompt, the K sampler, and then the VAE decode to generate the image. So far, everything is super basic. Of course, we also have here our empty latent image. Now, next, we are painting the map. Here we have something that is called a preview bridge. This is from the impact pack and is very useful because this will show you the image. You can paint the mask and then you can process this further in your workflow to paint the mask in here you want to right click and then down here select open and mask editor when you open that you can then paint onto the image so here you can see the original image that i have and then you paint your mask in on the area you want to replace or you want to change and then you click here on save to note. I have here an extra note that is converting the mask to an image just so you can see what is going on. And I have here an extra note with the Gaussian blur for the mask. This makes the mask soft on the outside and that blends it a lot better with the rest of the image. Now in that process, to give a fair comparison, I created a seed generator that is sending the same seed to both of these K samplers. In the green area, we have it with differential diffusion. And in the red area, we have it without, which is the classic in painting just with a mask. And as you can see here with the differential diffusion, it understands the structure of the face a lot better and creates nice sunglasses on the face. Even the rim is nicely going into the hair of the woman. This is, by the way, happening with the denoise of one, which basically means it's completely generated that area new but as you can see everything is fitting to the face in a correct and nice way now when we look at the same image that is generated with classic in painting and you can also see that we are using denoise one in that case the result is not as good so the glasses are fading out here they're not going into the hair the eyebrows are not looking good at this point you might wonder where is the actual differential diffusion happening in here well um it is this little node up here that simply sits in between your model and the case sampler it is small but it works well that's what the ladies tell me anyways and of course, as always, to install everything, you want to go to this window here. You want to click on the manager. You want to click on update all to have the newest version. And if you have any red nodes inside of the workflow, when you load it, you want to click here on install missing custom nodes. And then here in that list that pops up on the right side, you have the install buttons, install everything that is suggested 
and then restart Comp UI. Now you might think this is probably happening because the mask is too small and this is fading out because of it. So I made the mask a lot bigger and rendered everything again. And even though in the new result you can see that the glasses are there a lot more, they are still not perfectly because here on the edge it's kind of strange how it's rendering it. The eyebrows look a little bit strange, the hair here is kind of missing and the glasses are bending over here where they are supposed to go into the hair. Now you might say this is probably because there is a blur around the mask and the value of the denoise is too high. So I turned the value of the denoise lower and I turned off the mask blurring. But still on the right side we can see here the classic in painting. We still have a problem here with the hair. We have here a cut for the lip which is not good and overall the image doesn't look satisfying. While on the left side with the blurry mask, with the denoise on one, we get a very satisfying result of the in-painting on the first try. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new method. I'm really happy with the results that I'm getting. Thanks for watching this video and see you soon. Bye! Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet and well, um, yeah.